She was Australia's first superstar, famous across the world for her coloratura soprano voice and the charisma of her performances. Dame Nellie Melba lived an unconventional life in an era where women were expected to be content as wives and mothers. Melba was born Helen Porter Mitchell in 1861. She was determined to pursue a singing career, even after her marriage at age 21 and the birth of a son. Helen traveled to Europe to study with the famed Madame Marchese, who taught her technique, deportment, and importantly, how to conduct herself in society. While she didn't have a perfect voice, she was able to pick the roles that best showcased her talent. Marchese later said, it was her brains that made Melba's voice. Helen changed her name to Melba to honor her hometown of Melbourne and established herself as the world's most famous opera singer. She was particularly renowned for classics such as Home Sweet Home and swiftly became a fixture at London's Covent Garden Opera House. Melba's breakout performance was in Romeo and Juliet and she also became famous for her roles in La Traviata and La Boheme. She sang for the Russian Tsar, the Swedish King and Queen Victoria and moved in the highest circles of society. Her husband Charles came to Europe with her, but the marriage was over. He chose to ignore her discreet affairs until she fell passionately in love with the Duke of Orléans, whereupon he filed for divorce. Melba realized the scandal could derail her career and she broke off the affair. The divorce went through 10 years later, but Melba never remarried. In 1902, she made a triumphant return to Australia and set a new world record by netting 21,000 pounds for a single Sydney concert. Australians were fascinated by her life of fame and luxury and she was mobbed wherever she went. But Melba also inspired jealousy malicious rumors that she had a fondness for the bottle and treated fellow performers in a mean-spirited way plagued her throughout her life. The singer rose above these allegations and her star continued to climb as he reached her 40s. In 1918, she was made a dame of the British Empire. Melba was one of the first artists to make gramophone recordings and established a signature pink record label In 1920, she became the first internationally recognized artist to make a radio broadcast. Melba began a series of farewell performances in 1924, but it was another four years before her career was officially over. She died in 1931 of complications following cosmetic surgery, and her funeral motorcade was over a kilometer long. Melba's death was front page news across the world. Her funeral was held in Scots Church in Melbourne, and she was buried at Lilydale, near her country estate. Melba authorized one photo to be officially released following her death, an image of her playing Juliet, one of her earliest roles. It was how she wanted to be remembered. After her death, Melbourne's Conservatorium of Music was renamed in her honor. In the 1990s, Melba's likeness was chosen to appear on Australia's $100 bill, and in 2003, several high-profile philanthropists and musicians set up the Melba Foundation to help aspiring Australian singers establish international careers. The New York Times wrote in Melba's obituary, fortunate the generation that heard her, for we shall never hear her like again.